points on a line can be matched to one another with real numbers, or match one to one with real numbers. The real number that corresponds to the point is the coordinate of the point, and the distance between the points A and B, written as AB, is the absolute value of the difference of the coordinates of A and B. Okay? That's our way in geometry of having very precise ways of saying things so that there's no ambiguity and that anybody who reads it, if they can understand what we're talking about, can not, be mis not have a mistaken idea of what's going on. Okay? But this is really a lot of words to say simply, we can take a number line and put two points on that line and we can have values below them, right, coordinates, and we can ask you to find the length of that, of that segment that's between those two points, okay? So what we're asking you to do then is to find distances between points. And we can do that with rulers and we can do that with number lines. Let me grab a handout for you. And the first thing I want you to do at the top of your page is to fill out the blank that says, in geometry, a rule that is accepted without proof is called an axiom or a blank. So what word are we looking for in that blank? Postulate. Okay, Postulate is probably a word you've never used before. Does anyone use the word postulate in casual conversation? No. Okay. All a postulate is is a fancy way of saying it's something that we can accept without having to prove. Okay. The sky is blue. Does anyone ever say prove it? No. We accept that as, as true, right? Grass is green, right? Unless, of course, it's yellow, but for the most part, grass is green. So those healthy grass is green, right? Um, ocean water is salty, okay? Those are just kind of things that we accept to be true. This is one of those things in geometry. We're never going to ask you to prove that you can set points on a number line and find the distance between them. Does that make sense? Okay. So you have a planner, and your planner has a ruler. So I'd like you to pull your planner out, and I believe it's in the back cover of your planner. We're going to use that planner to measure distances. You've probably been doing this since first or second or third grade, right? So nothing new here. So find the distance between A and B on your paper. And we ask you to find that one to the nearest centimeter. So line your planner edge up against AB. I think it's on the cover itself. There you go. Seven. I heard one person say seven. Do you agree or disagree? I agree. Agree? Agree? Everybody in agreement? All right. On your sheet, that is seven centimeters. So write down seven next to it. Then I'd like you to measure the distance between C and D to the nearest millimeter. What does that mean? The, the little ticks between those. So a centimeter is a, t a hundredth of a meter. A millimeter is a millionth of a meter. So the marks, one, two, three, four, five on your ruler are showing you centimeters. The little tick marks between that four and five are millimeters. Okay, so line it up against C and D and tell me what you think. Is it exactly 40? 
41, the very first tick after 40, or 42, 41, I'm hearing lots of 41s. Everybody get 41 and okay with that number? All right, so write 41 millimeters on that example. Okay, you can do this for assignment today, right? No problems here, easy, easy breezy. Okay, next example. A little bit of review from Friday and Thursday and Wednesday. I'd like you to use your pencil and I'd like you to shade. Remind me, what does this symbol mean? Opposite ray, I like that, or line, okay? Those are opposite rays because they form a straight line. I'd like you to shade line AB for me. Yep, just with your pencil. Trace over line AB for me. Good. I'm seeing lots of you covering up A and B, but you keep on going, right? Why do we keep on going? It never ends. Because that line never ends. It's infinite. So you can keep on going and then highlight those little arrows on the end. A, B, line A, B is that whole thing. It goes forever. Okay. Remind me, what's the symbol above C, D mean? Segment. So I want you to highlight or shade segment CD for me. Did everyone go just from point C to point D? Okay. That is segment CD. That ends. That has a very uh, a term of two endpoints, an endpoint C and an endpoint D. We stop. We don't go beyond. Okay. What does this symbol mean? Ray. Ray E F. So I'd like you to shade Ray E F for me on your paper. Abriana, tell me where you started with your shading. Good. Which direction did you go? Right, toward the F, right? Very nice. So we want to only include endpoint E and head in the direction of F so we don't include anything before the E, correct? Anything to the left of the E? Because that is ray EF. So we know what those symbols mean done a great job of paying attention, focusing on them, and learning those. But what does it mean when we have a lack of a symbol? Because planes don't have symbols, right? Points don't have symbols. Potentially line FG, but that would have to have a line symbol above it, right? And so I want you to pay attention to another little key nuance and a little bit of our um, hieroglyphics for geometry because it gets really tedious as a geometry teacher to have to write find the distance between A and B to the nearest centimeter. Find the distance between C and D to the nearest millimeter. So when we see something like this with no symbol on top, two points listed, no symbol, that is read as the distance between. A lot shorter, isn't it? Okay, so that's another piece of the vocabulary, a piece of the symbolism that we'll be using that's going to help us. Yes, sir? I would do it um, at least here. I would write it is the that way you have it in one place so that you remember it because writing it down helps you remember it. So 
FG, two points listed side by side with no symbols, is the distance between F and G. So I would either need to give you a number line or I would need to give you a ruler and we could measure that distance between F and G to the centimeter, the inch, the yard, the foot, the mile, and so on. So we're looking for a measurement when we have no symbol above it. Does that make sense to everyone? What questions do you have about this? All right, we're good. We'll keep moving so you get plenty of time to get started on your assignment today. So here's where we can start to use some of this information. So while back um, country hiking in Yellowstone, you hiked from Artist's Paint Pot to Mary Lake, and you want to know how much further it is to Beach Lake. Okay? Maps are common occurrences of using this type of math. So I took a screenshot or a, a scan of my Yellowstone map from two years ago. How many people have been to Yellowstone? One, two. It's in why it's it's in three three states: um, Wyoming, Montana, a little bit in Montana, and a little bit in Idaho, but mostly in Wyoming. So it's a, it's a long long way to get there, but I I truly believe every American should go to Yellowstone at least once in their life. It's amazing. What did you like it? Really cool. All right. So as we were at a campground, we overheard someone saying that they were hiking from Artist Paint Pots to Mary Lake one day, and they were going to camp overnight and then they were going to go from Mary Lake to Beach Lake after that. So you see no roads around there, right? That's supposed to be the best way to visit Yellowstone, is to get off the roads away from all the people and actually experience it by being in nature. I'm not sure I'm ready to bring a shovel and dig a hole to go to the bathroom and so forth, so I've never done that, so maybe someday I will. But can you see that from Artist Paint Pot to Beach Lake is how many miles? Ten miles, okay? So we are at Mary Lake then. We got as far as Mary Lake. How far did we get in that first portion of our hike? Five and a half? 5.6? Five 5.6, 5 okay. So everybody's okay with 5.6, 5.5, 5.7, somewhere in there? Because we didn't quite get to six miles, did we? Okay. We hiked a, a, almost six miles, but not quite. So if we call this 5.6, I think it's actually further than that. See how halfway between five and three-fourths? Okay, so we went 5.75 miles. And this is an estimate, right? In Yellowstone, you don't have cell service. Okay, there aren't towers all over the place. There are some by um, the Old Faithful Inn, but beyond that, you're pretty much using maps, um, not your GPS. Okay, so how much further would we have to go if we were trying to get to Beach Lake? 4.25. How did you know that? You did the math. What was the math that you did? Yeah, 10 minus the distance that you've already accomplished. Okay, so that's the kind of stuff that we're going to be asking you to do today. Okay, things that aren't a big stretch from what you've done before. So... Segment addition postulate says that if point B is between, so here's a new postulate, if B is between A and C, so point A, B is between points A and C, then how is this read again? The distance between A and B, right, plus the distance between B and C is equal to the distance between A and C, right? That makes sense. So we want you to prove that. It's logical, right? Okay, so basic that we wouldn't want to prove something like that. So if I asked you, what is the distance between A and B? You'd say three. Why is it three? Starts at zero, goes to three. Three minus zero is three, right? Or we counted the steps. We counted the, the tick marks, okay? What's the distance between B and C? Good. Why is it 5? Went from 3 to 8. 3 to 8 is 5 units. Okay. Or 8 minus 3 is 5. And what's the total distance from A to C? Yeah. Okay. 
Now, on your handout, I apologize. When I made this screenshot, I made it really large, and I had to shrink it in. And sometimes in Word, when you shrink it in, it flips things upside down and backwards. I don't know why. <laughs> so your points don't look quite like mine do. Your A's and B's are down below, and your number line's up above. Okay? But if I asked you for the distance between A and B, what would you say it is? Seven. Why is it seven? Good. So you're taking us four steps to the right to get to zero plus three more steps, and we say that's seven. Okay? Is it negative seven? No. Why is it seven? Why is it positive seven? We're moving forward, not backward. And mis distances are always measured in a positive manner, right? You never say, I went fifty mile, negative 50 miles to grandma's house, right? We always talk about them being 50 miles west of here or 30 miles north, but never negative for distances. Okay? So your book is going to get very um, mathematical in its definition of the segment addition postulate, and it's going to say that you will find the absolute value of this minus this. Okay? All they're saying is that you need to make sure that you're finding the positive distance. Make sense? Okay. What was the distance between B and C then? Good. So the total distance between A and C? Okay. Nothing complicated. Okay. We're just throwing it at you in geometry class. You've seen it before. Okay. What questions do you have on this? Okay. All right. Next one. So sometimes instead of giving you a number line, we're going to give you values between those two points to let you know that the distance between x and y is 14. And the distance between y and z is 27. So if we want you to find the distance between x and z, what will you do? Add them together. Okay, The adding is the most complicated piece because we'll have to carry a number here. So what is 14 plus 27? Good. Okay. That's all there is to it. Easy peasy? Okay. What if we tell you that the distance between B and D is 25, and the distance between B and C is 19, and we want you to find the distance between C and D? Then we subtract. Yeah, 25 minus 19 is what? Good. But do you see how if you don't understand what that symbolism means, that you could get confused? Okay, math isn't hard. It's just getting used to our new books and our new vocabulary. Okay? Any questions on this one? Okay, next one. We do this all the time without thinking about it. We plan a trip from Oklahoma City to uh, St. Louis, Missouri. Okay, I picked this because it was a relatively straight route. And we said, guess what? We know that our trip is supposed to be 499.2 miles long. Okay, we did the map. We mapped it out ahead of time. And we filled up with gas in Oklahoma City, and we're at 286.2 miles on the odometer. Okay, our trip, our little trip clock says that we're at 286.2. We want to know how much further do we have to go now that we've stopped at Springfield to get to St. Louis. And how did you find that? You subtracted them. Okay. 499.2 minus 286.2. And you got 213 miles. Okay. Real life applications. Okay. This is stuff, this is geometry, and this is a real world application of when you would use it. Okay? What questions do you have about this one? Okay? All right. Last example. And I turn you over to your work, and then we'll actually go over any questions you hope to have over Friday's assignment as well. So we want to plot some points. I need you to make one slight change for me. I have a typo. I typed three twice. It should have been three, two. So on, on, your, on your sheet, we have the point P at negative 4, 2, and the point Q at 3, 2. 
change that three to a two. Okay, correcting my errors. So I want to make sure you remember how to plot points. So go ahead and plot a point at four, negative four, two. Put a dot there and label it with a capital P. Then put a point on three, two. And label that with a capital Q. And a point at negative one, four. Label that dot with a an R. And finally, negative one, negative two. And label that point S. Then I want you to connect P and Q so we have a segment. And then connect R and S, so you've got segment RS. Okay, so we have two segments there. And we're supposed to now decide whether segment PQ is something with segment RS. Looks like an equal to, doesn't it? Okay, but what's different about it? It's got a squiggly across, it's got a tilde across the top. Okay, this symbol means is congruent to. is congruent to. Okay? They make a slight distinction between equals and congruent here. Segments are congruent if their measures or their distances are equal. Okay? So congruent to means that segments and angles in a bit, we'll talk about angles being congruent in a couple of days, that they have an equal distances or di equal measure measures. ask you if segments are congruent, you check and see if their distances between those points are equal. If they are, you say yes. If they're not, you say no. So what is the length of RS? What's the distance between R and S? Six. How do you know? You can count, right? Or you can say in R and S, the negative one didn't change, but four to negative two is a total of six. Four minus a minus two is a positive six. Okay. What about PQ? Distance between them. What do you think? Seven. Everybody agree? P and Q, we the twos are the same, but three minus a minus four is seven. So since the distance between R and S is six and the distance between P and Q is seven, are those two segments congruent? No. And what do you think this might mean? Not congruent to. Absolutely, we can use that too. Make sense? What questions do you have about this one? Okay. So, assignment is on the bottom of your sheet.
okay I want you to skip number eight it's going to ask you to copy a segment we're not going to get the compasses out to, sh to do that so you have a lot of time to work today skip number eight two through twenty eight even skipping eight and then thirty two and thirty four And I like your assignment out from yesterday, from Friday, and we'll talk about any questions you have on that. Absolutely. You bet. Just make sure you get it back in the same time. You bet. Give me one second. I'm going to stop my recording.